it. Okay, so that's the abstraction. And now comes the another important aspect of a polymorphism. If you have any doubts on abstraction, so I try to put it in the simplest way so that you it sits in your memory. Um, I am little fortunate in my career that uh, um, uh, I learned um, object-oriented principles from one of a very good teacher. And um, and st I still remember those concepts today and try able to tell you. Um, so I have seen uh, folks who are completely scared of object-oriented programming and w what what is this Greek word and all other things. But uh, trust me, it really helps uh, uh, the way you present it and I hope you are getting it clearly. Okay, so polymorphism, if you see, um, it, it is the, the word itself is derived from a Greek, Greek word, which means uh, I'm having multiple forms. Uh, so since it is a Greek word, it is, not, it is, good, it is kind of an alien uh, a keyword, it is a polymorphism, it, it really doesn't re relate to an English uh, for us to uh, grasp it easily. So if you see polytechnic uh, is another way, so poly means many. Okay, polymorphism, in other words, uh, is called form. So why I'm stressing this way? Because you relate the, uh, the if you relate these keywords to the real-time meaning, then you will definitely, will never forget what does this mean. So you will never forget, uh, you're confused between abstraction, uh, polymorphism, I think it's other way around, things like that. So I've seen people uh, get confused between these two words or interrelate these words. So if you expand this uh, clearly, then you will uh, remember it um, much better way. So polymorphism uh, is a uh, poly itself stands for multiple and morphism is forms. So it means multiple forms. So when you say multiple forms, then we'll, you will know whatever we're going to talk now. Okay. So in programming, we can implement the multiple definitions of the same <coughs> name or method or function with variable parameters. So uh, in, in, it has multiple different types of polymorphism, but all of them uh, core aspect is if you have a method or, or a function, so all you can do is you have the same name shared uh, with variable parameters to have a different definition to it. So in other words, uh, how you relate this to a real-time uh, real world. Uh, it's a typical example uh, I could think of uh, out of my head, if you see. Uh, um, it's more like an artificial intelligence, uh, but I, may, I might be going too long. Uh, if you see um, uh, the way you uh, communicate to others, you, the way you react to things, right? Uh, you might say um, hello as a simple way, a simple way, or you might say hello in a different way or a different context. So hello itself has a different meaning based on how you invoke it or how you say it out, right? So in real term, in real world, uh, so if the object is trying to communicate to other object, uh, uh, that communication might be the same communication, but based on the context, the meaning might change. So that you you will see that uh, in in the real world every every day to day life. So in the, even in English, uh, there are so many instances you will come across that the meaning of a certain word will change based on the context that you use the word. Um, so that's the real world transformation if you look at. So the polymorphism similarly achieves the same thing. So you have the same name uh, having different meaning based on a different context. Okay, so the meaning is uh, uh, is your definition, uh, how you write it. Let me get into the code so that you can uh, have a quick glimpse. So I'll take this typical example of uh, the automobile. In this, I have a start. Uh, the start method, uh, uh, in this case, uh, the context uh, is defined in terms of the number of parameters that I'm passing in. So here I have a same name with two different contexts, which is two different set of parameters passed in and also they have their own body. So in this case I'm doing just writing something and in this case I'm actually doing little more than just writing it down. I'm just incrementing some values based on the, oops sorry. 
Okay, so this is what a polymorphism means. So sharing the same name uh, uh, and uh, defining its own context, uh, defining its own body based on the context. So the context here is defined based on the parameters that I'm passing in and it has a different uh, body to be called. Okay, so how many types of polymorphisms we have? Uh, so this is again a wide uh, uh, topic of uh, uh, variance definitions you'll see on, on the uh, on the internet or the or the the flow folks all, all around on the community. Uh, so generally, at the high level, if you say people might start directly with the low level, like they can say, what is how many types of polymorphism you have? You have uh, method overloading, method operator overloading, or oper uh, method overriding. Uh, that's all three things you have. But if you really classify them based on the uh, based on uh, how they are or which context they are being used then you can classify the high level as an ad hoc polymorphism and the parameterized polymorphism. So parameterized polymorphism is uh, um, probably I might uh, show you uh, down the line when we talk about generics. Uh, so you can achieve that using generics wherein uh, you create an object um, and uh, you, uh, the way you initialize the object will change the behavior of it. So there again, you will use the same uh, name for a different use, but at a class level. Okay, so the level at which you use uh, the, as a parameter as polymorphism is will change. Uh, so here it is completely at a very high level, wherein uh, you can define a class with respect to constructor of a, a generic type. Uh, based on the type that you pass in when you create the uh, instance of that class, uh, its behavior will be different. So uh, that is a, a concept of uh, generics. So when we talk about generics, uh, probably I will uh, demo the parameterized polymorphism. Okay, and uh, the ad hoc polymorphism is what we're going to see today. Under this ad hoc polymorphism, we have two types of polymorphisms. One is at compile time, and other one is at runtime. Okay, so compile time polymorphism is grouped again into two. One is a method overloading, operator overloading, and the runtime has a method overriding. Okay, so in general if you say overloading and overriding are the only two things that are classified in general. If you normally ask anyone, they would say well, how many types of polymorphism you have? Some may start with saying it has a compile time, it has a runtime. Some very high level guys might say it has an ad hoc polymorphism and parameterized polymorphism because parameterized polymorphism is again an advanced topic so people normally won't uh, talk at that uh, level. Uh, so people will normally start with the compile time or runtime and some will directly start with saying uh, it has a overloading and overriding. So you achieve uh, polymorphism using an overloading and overriding. So we'll see what is an overloading and overriding and uh, also uh, the compile time. Uh, today I'm, I will not be showing the operator overloading uh, which you can do only using C sharp. Um, so probably in next session I will uh, show you a demo wherein you can overload an operator. So we have seen a couple of operators uh, like a plus, minus, uh, division, mod, so on. So we can over load that operator to behave differently based on your context again. So that we can do uh, in a later session. For today we will see uh, the method overloading and method overriding. So method overloading um, is again same thing which is having methods or functions uh, with the same name with the variable parameters varying in data types and the order of data types. So in this case, if we say, uh, so these are the two characteristics that you need to keep in mind. So you can vary, uh, you can have the same name with variable signatures or variable data types that you pass as a parameter. So in this case, I have a string. Okay, I'll quickly go back uh, to the demo so that we'll do, we can do more there. Okay, so in this case, I have a um, um, string and I'm going to define another one with the, so at this stage if you see uh, and if I try to compile it uh, I'm getting an error saying already defines a member called start with the same parameter types so the error is the crystal clear for us to know 
why this is failing because um, you already have the same name with the same parameter with the same parameter types that's a key thing to know so I can have the same name but if I just change this to a different type then and build it so in this case um, I have overloaded start with the two different data type parameter types so here in this case I have a parameter of type string and in this case I have a parameter of type int so this uh, if you notice the name really doesn't matter you can have the same name uh, in, in the parameter name I'm talking about so the parameter name can be same but it should vary with the data type and also if you look at the other one so it has a three parameters to it and okay so I will uh, replicate the same again same three parameters again here okay so here I'm doing something else and uh, here I'm doing something else okay it really doesn't matter right now so I will um, take away the body so that to keep our understanding uh, easily um, see if I, I wrote this code another key thing if you just wanted to uh, show you the difference between the how the uh, the compiler the background compiler works in C sharp versus VB.NET right now I don't have the VB.NET code for this uh, but if you typically uh, open this uh, do the same code in VB.NET it will straight away tell you the error uh, I don't have to explicitly compile this so there's a background compiler that works in VB.NET uh, compiler which is not there in C sharp.net so for C sharp.net if I want to see errors I have to compile it okay so when I once I compile this I, I can able to see the error saying the same error which is the same type of parameters so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to keep the same number of uh, parameters but just um, move the first one to the last okay so in this case I have um, double double string and in this case I have string double double so I still have the same parameters passed but in the order of the parameters are changed okay and now I compile now it's good so that's the key difference we need to see and also another key difference here is um, you cannot actually overload any member with a variable return type for example uh, I have this and I will change make this uh, return type as int so why it returns nothing so um, I'm just having a, a same name with the same set of parameter with a different written type uh, and oops, sorry. so the compiler doesn't accept so you cannot overload you using a variable written type with the same set of parameters okay so people uh, will ask uh, some of the people not everyone um, especially when uh, uh, especially, especially for the freshers who are looking for a fresher positions uh, people will try to play with them uh, asking such uh, typical questions and uh, most of the time it's very annoying for people uh, because you cannot remember all this uh, thing of variable combinations so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to give you a pretty um, real-time example uh, in other words think about yourself in this case uh, we see uh, start think about yourself if you have ambiguity it's okay if you have if you see two objects uh, with the same uh, of the same type like if you have uh, um, two balls uh, sitting in your living room um, one is uh, 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 yellow another one is also yellow okay and someone asks you to uh, bring uh, get me the yellow ball okay you you go to the living room and see two yellow balls and immediately you'll say which yellow ball okay so both are same right both are same wall same size and uh, same dimensions and uh, both are of same color 
and you will uh, probably because you're a human you can always say okay yellow ball so whichever yellow ball I click that's fine right doesn't matter but if you're a program you you're, you're not uh, that smart right so you always uh, run on certain para certain um, parameters right you will try to locate uh, uh, same method with the same set of parameters and you see two so when you see two which one you to invoke you don't know you cannot decide okay so that's the same ambiguity the compiler will go in so that's why you cannot have um, a same method uh, with the same set of parameters but you can have a different set of parameters in a different order and so on so different data types and so on so that way you can make it unique you can identify okay this is a method and this is a block you're trying to call and I can go and pick that call so if you think that way then it makes your life easy so written type doesn't matter because the written type uh, really doesn't play uh, in making your method unique because the number of parameters are passed to you when you make a call so if you, if you remember that when I say start I pass one string or one string or two doubles so that's what matters so whatever you taking as an instruction uh, uh, as part of your message so when I say message passing that's what it means so I'm calling this start passing these arguments so that's a message to the respective object to invoke okay hope that is clear uh, yeah, so you cannot have, uh, you cannot overload uh, methods with, uh, uh, with the same uh, name and same parameters, parameter types with a different written type, okay? And another key thing here, so there's a new keyword that is getting introduced now. What, this is called a virtual, okay? We'll see uh, what is this virtual keyword. Okay, so now, um, so another key thing in overloading here is uh, the last one. The overloading can happen within the same class or from derived class. So we did not talk about what is a derived class. Okay, so we'll see uh, what quickly what is a derived class. So I'm going back to the the diagram. This is this is the uh, the architectural edition of the Visual Studio. I'm not sure if you have Express Edition, you might not have this. So uh, you can actually have the uh, diagram view of your code. Um, so in this case, um, so if I expand, I can see what all its properties and methods are diagrammatically and uh, also collapse it. Uh, and this is a very good feature um, uh, in Visual Studio. Earlier it was not there. Uh, there were a couple of other tools that were used for your um, uh, your this is in other words called a case tools which are computer aided uh, software engineering tools um, so uh, this is the class diagram that we are we are seeing and uh, and the code that we are trying to uh, have here is the same code that you here all I need to do is I just drag and drop it to this and to add a diagram or if you have uh, the the architectural edition which comes as part of the visual studio professional or enterprise uh, all you need to do is uh, go to the add and pick the diagram. We'll have something called the where is class diagram? I missed it somewhere. Yep, here it is. So this is a class diagram. All you need to do is just add it and uh, simply. <clears throat> drag and drop your code file and it will give you the diagram so it's very simple um, so we'll go back here okay so we were talking about uh, the overloading and overloading and uh,